Archbishop Rino Fisicella, President of the Pontifical Council for Promoting New Evangelization, recently wrote this. We are not hiding the fact that there is a crisis of faith, but it is only when one becomes completely aware of a crisis that one can find ways to remedy it. The Archbishop said Pope Benedict called the year of faith to strengthen Catholics who go to church, reach out to those who have left but still yearn for God in their lives, offer a response to those who are searching for meaning, and help those who think that they do not need God. He said the Pope decided that it was right to mark the 50th anniversary of the opening of the Second Vatican Council and the 20th anniversary of the publication of the Catechism of the Catholic Church with a year dedicated to encouraging Catholics to study, profess, and demonstrate their faith. And so I would like to direct your attention to the banner which is hanging on the wall here. And I recognize that the folks who are seated here are probably having a, going to have a hard time seeing it. But I want to look at the logo for a moment. You see, there's a ship. And the symbol for the ship is the church. And she's on the water, and you see the waves. And the waves are battering against the ship. Those are the waves of secularism that are tossing the ship to and fro and about. And you notice that the mast of the ship is the cross, but the sail is the ictus, the I-H-S. And in the background you see the sun, and the sun is a symbol for the Holy Eucharist. And in 1963, when the Second Vatican Council opened, there was a young priest by the name of Joseph Ratzinger, who was assigned to the council as a young theologian. Today, that young priest is Pope Benedict XVI. And so, on the 50th anniversary of the promulgation of the Second Vatican Council, which was October 11th, he has dedicated this year for the Church as the year of faith. And he's asking us to look at two things. First, he's asking us to look at where we came from, where we are, and where we're headed. And then the second thing he's asking us to do is to ask ourselves, is this where the church intended for us to be? Archbishop Fisicella talks about a crisis of faith. And in order to understand that what he speaks, that he speaks the truth, one need not look very far. We can limit our focus to our own parish and ask ourselves the question, what was Monsignor Simard thinking when he built Our Lady of the Holy Rosary Church in 1963 with 900 seats? Well, back then you had three priests in the rectory. You had six masses on the weekend, and every single one of them was full. And you had ushers at every mass. I remember, I was a kid, the ushers would stand here. So you, you remember, don't you, Maria? And if you wanted to sit down here, you had to pay seat money. What's that? Yeah, yeah, she says, yeah, I, rem I remember that. And so, in 50 years, what has happened? 
What has happened to all of the children who were baptized in this parish alone, made their first confession, made their first communion, made their confirmation, and now are gone? What has happened in 50 years when people no longer think that church is necessary in their life? I don't need to go to church to pray. True statement or false? It's a half-truth. It's a half-truth. I can pray at home. However, there is something that we do here in this church that you cannot do at home. Offer sacrifice. God commands us to gather together and to offer sacrifice. What is happening or what has happened in 50 years when our Catholic institutions, colleges, with Catholic name, with the names of saints, no longer abide by Catholic teaching or doctrine? What has happened in 50 years when politicians, and recently you had a debate between the Vice President of the United States and one who is seeking to run for that office, both Catholic and divided over the issue of abortion. What has happened? What has happened in 50 years when recently a journalist on national television this past week who identified himself as a practicing Catholic said this, what is wrong with those people when, who think that when an egg becomes fertilized, that's a human person? What's happened? What has happened in 50 years that someone who was here at Mass recently, who was baptized in this parish, made their first communion, confirmed, and now is worshiping in the Protestant church. What has happened is that person doesn't understand Eucharist. And so what Pope Benedict XVI is asking us to do is to study, is to once again walk through the door of faith as we did the first time when we were baptized. Pope Benedict XVI is asking us to understand what it is that we stand up and profess when we say, I believe. What has happened in 50 years when the church right now is going through a martyrdom? Do you realize that? Do you realize that the church right now is being persecuted? When the government can say through a mandate that we have to violate the very conscience of our faith and what we believe and provide something which we think is sinful. That's a white martyrdom, my brothers and sisters. And the next kind of martyrdom comes next, the shedding of blood. And if you don't think that that's possible to happen in this country, you're not paying attention. Well, Benedict XVI is asking us to understand what it means to be Catholic. Pope Benedict XVI is asking us to understand what it is that the church teaches and why it teaches what it teaches. There are people who come to this church, my brothers and sisters, who are not Catholic, but who are curious. And they have a desire to want to know. And they're looking, they're seeking, and they're watching me and you. And they have questions. And what do you think they think when we cannot explain what we believe or why we believe what we believe? They walk away and they shake their head. 
You know, I just came home from a part of the world where things are so different. I spent a night in Dubrovnik, in Croatia, and we toured the old city, the old walled city, and as we were touring the old walled city, the guide said to us, you know, hundreds of years ago, the people who lived here consecrated their children to Christ and to God at the moment of conception. What did they know 500 years ago that we don't get today? And so I think about the place that I just came from, where it is purported, and I have to say purported because I can't say for certain, with certainty, that the Blessed Mother is appearing. And I think about, you know, let's say just for the sake of argument, let's say if it's true. Let us, let's say it's true that she has been appearing every single day for the last 31 years. That's amazing. Because the longest running apparitions that we know of that are accepted by the church, Fatima was 17 days. What is going on okay, that the mother of God would come to us every day for the last 31 years? Well, I think back to one of the earliest messages where she said this, I have come to tell you that God exists. I have come to tell you that he is calling you back to himself. Very simple message, very short, yet is directed to two groups of people. The first part of the message is directed to unbelievers, those who don't believe in God, and those who live their lives like there is no God. She's come to tell us he's real. And I want to teach you about him. In the second part of the message, I've come to tell you that he's calling you back to himself. is directed to believers. Why would it be necessary for the mother of God to tell believers that God is calling them back to himself if, in fact, those who claim to believe have not strayed so far off the beaten path that it now becomes necessary to be led back. You know, Ralph Martin, who is a theologian and theology professor at Sacred Heart Seminary in Wisconsin, recently wrote a book called, Will Many Be Saved? And in the book, he said something pretty provocative. He said this. It is in becoming increasingly more and more difficult and will become ever more difficult to catechize and evangelize people. He said because of the presumption that they have that they're okay with God. In other words, he's saying that it's going to be hard to teach those who don't believe that they need to be taught. It's going to be hard to get those people to open up when they feel that they got everything they need, that they're good to go. And so Our Lady comes, not as a theologian, she comes as a mother with a very simple message. And she says, I want to give you five little stepping stones to slay your Goliath. Do you remember the story of David and Goliath in the Old Testament? He had five little stones in his pouch. And she says, the first little stone I want to give you is prayer with the heart, the Holy Rosary. The Holy Rosary is the most powerful an efficacious prayer outside of the Mass because it is a prayer 
which is Christ-centered. We would say Christocentric. It is a mini Bible. It is focused on the life of Jesus Christ. She says, the second little stone I would like to give you is monthly confession. You know, Medjugorje is the confessional of the world. I, I was I, every time I go there, I'm amazed at the number of people who line up and stand there for hours to go to confession. Do you know why? Because they understand that it's not that they're bad people, but that they're wounded people. They understand that there, is, there are things in them that make them do the things they don't want to do and that they need to be healed from those things. They understand sacramental grace. The third little stone she says I want to give you is the Word of God, daily scripture reading. We cannot profess to know Jesus if we do not know Scripture. There are many people who have information about Jesus, but they do not know Him. Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. It takes five minutes, my brothers and sisters, to read the daily readings. Five minutes. The fourth little stone she says I want to give you is fasting. Many of you remember you used to have to fast from midnight on to go to communion. Many of you remember when you had to fast on Fridays and you had to abstain from meat and the church relaxed that discipline. It didn't do away with it. And so, how many of us no longer fast? How many of us no longer even pay attention to the one-hour fast before coming to Mass to prepare to receive Holy Communion? And the fifth little stone Our Lady wants to give us is Holy Mass. She's saying that the Holy Eucharist, which is the real presence the real presence, not a symbol, the real presence of Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Christ is really and truly present on the altar of sacrifice. You come to communion, you are not receiving a symbol, you're not receiving bread, you're not receiving wine, you are receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ, really and truly. What has happened in 50 years, my brothers and sisters, that Catholics are divided on this issue, that they don't believe that anymore. Pope Benedict XVI is asking us to become familiar with our faith, to learn our faith. No one is going to be willing to die for someone they do not know. There are people in the world today, my brothers and sisters, that are dying for Jesus Christ. They're being martyred. No one will die for someone they do not know. There was a problem today, a problem called, the problem was called syncretism. Do you know what syncretism is? I take a little of this, a little of this, a little of this, a little of this, and I fix it all together, and I call that Christianity. And people are opening the door to some very demonic stuff in their lives. Why? Because they do not know their faith. The Pope is asking us to be willing to experience conversion. To step through the door of faith, to read the scriptures, to 
pray the rosary, to go to confession, to fast, to come to Mass on a regular basis, to come to Eucharistic adoration, to realize that the solution to the problems that we're experiencing in the world, see, we don't have an economic crisis. We have a crisis of faith. There's no crisis that God can't solve if we put our faith in him, see. If Monsignor Samard were to build Holy Rosary Church today, if, if, he had to, if he were alive and he needed to build a church today, would Monsignor Samard be building a 900-seat church today? No. It would be half that size. If it would be half that size. That's all happened, my brothers and sisters, in 50 years. 50 years. Pope Benedict XVI is a wise man. He's looked back. He knows where we came from. He sees where we are, and he knows where we're headed if we don't make some changes. And so be on the lookout this coming year. There's all kinds of things that are offered in this parish. Bible studies. I had men's group. We had women's group. And you know, it's the same people who come to the same things all the time. The answer to the problems that we're experiencing are not going to be found out there. They're going to be found in here. So I'm asking you during this year of faith, see, to avail yourselves, to be willing to learn, to study, to experience a deeper conversion, a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's what the Pope said. The year of faith is an opportunity for Catholics to experience a conversion, to turn back to Jesus and enter into a deeper relationship with him. The door of faith is opened at one's baptism, but during this year, Catholics are called to open it again, to walk through it and rediscover and renew their relationship with Christ and his church.